All glory is to Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. All glory is to Srila Krishna Das Kadiraj Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Madhya Lila, Chapter 9, Text 263. Kama Ninda, Karma Jaga, Sarva Shastri Kahe, Karma Haite Preme Bhakti, Vishne Kabu Nahe. Translation In every revealed scripture, there is condemnation of fruit of activity. It is advised everywhere to give up engagement in fruit of activity. For by it, no one can attain the highest goal of life, love of Godhead. Purport. In the Vedas, there are three khandas or divisions, Karmakand, Janakand, and Upashanakand. The Karmakand portion stresses the execution of fruit of activities, although ultimately it is advised that one abandon both Karmakand and Janakand, speculative knowledge, and accept only Upashanakand, or Bhakti Khand. One cannot attain love of Godhead by executing karmakand or jnanakand. However, by dedicating one's karma or fruit of activities to the Supreme Lord, one may be relieved from the polluted mind. But when one is actually free from material pollution, one must be elevated to the spiritual platform. It is then that one needs the association of a pure devotee. For only by a pure devotee's association can one become a pure devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. When one comes to the stage of pure devotional service of Godhead, the process of Shravanam, Kirtanam, is very essential. By executing the nine items of devotional service, one is completely purified. Anya Bilashita Sunyam, Jana Karmadi Anavartam. Bhakti Rasta Murta Sindhu 1.1.12. Only then is one able to execute the order of Krishna. Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namas guru. Mam evaishashi satyamte prati jane priyoshime. Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Bhagavad Gita 18.65 Sarva dharmam pritchyaga mamekam sharanam vraja eham tvam sarva papebio mokchas yami ma sucha Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Bhagavad Gita 18.66 in this way, one develops his original constitutional position by which he can render loving service to the Lord. One cannot be elevated to the highest platform of devotional service by Karmakand or Jnanakand. Pure devotional service can be understood and attained only through the association of pure devotees. In this regard, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur states that there are two types of Karmakand activities, pious and impious. Pious activities are certainly preferred to impious activities, but even pious activities cannot assure one ecstatic love of God, Krishna. Pious and impious activities can bring about material happiness or distress, but there is no possibility in one's becoming a pure devotee simply by acting piously or impiously. Bhakti, devotional service, means satisfying Krishna. In every revealed scripture, whether Janakand or Karmakand, is stressed, the principle of renunciation is always praised. The ripened fruit of Vedic knowledge, Srimad Bhagavatam, is the supreme Vedic evidence. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Naiskarmyam api achuktabhava varijatam na soopate janam alam niranjanam kuta puna sasvad abhavram isvare na kapitam karmaya api akaranam Knowledge of self-realization, even though freed from all material affinity, does not look well if devoid of a conception of the infallible, God. What then is the use of fruitive activities, which are naturally painful from the very beginning and transient by nature? 
if they are not utilized for the devotional service of the Lord. Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam 1.5.12. This means that even knowledge, which is superior to fruit of activity, is not successful if it is devoid of devotional service. In all scriptures, in the beginning, middle, and end, Karma Khand and Jnana Khand are condemned. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Dharma Projita Kaita Bhotra. And this, explained, uh, this is explained in the following verses taken from Srimad Bhagavatam 11.11.32 and Bhagavad Gita 18.66. Text 264. Ajan yevam gunan doshan, maya dishtan apis vakam, dharman sanchadya ya sarvan, mam bajet sacha satmaha. Translation Occupational duties are described in the religious scriptures. If one analyzes them, he can fully understand their qualities and faults, then give them up completely to render service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A person, who does, a person who does so is considered to be a first-class man. Text 265. Translation. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Text 266. Tavat karmani korvita na nirvidyeta yabata matkata shravana doba shrada yavana jayate. As long as one is satiated by fruit of activity and has not awakened his taste for devotional service by shravanam kirtanam, uh, kirtanam vishnu, one has to act according to the regulative principles of the Vedic injunctions. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 11.20.9. Text 267. Translation. Pure devotees reject the five kinds of liberation. Indeed, liberation for them is very insignificant because they see it as hellish. Text 268. Chalokya sarsti samipya sarupya katvam api uta diyamanam na dranti dinamat sevanam jana. Translation Pure devotees always reject the five kinds of liberation, which include living in the spiritual Vaikuntha planets, possessing the same opulences possessed by the Supreme Lord having the same bodily features as the Lord, associating with the Lord, and merging into the body of the Lord. The pure devotees do not accept these benedictions without the service of the Lord. Purport. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 3.29.13. Text 269. <laughs> Pralartayam Sri Yam Sura Bari Sadaya Balokam Nachan Nupas Tad Uchita Mahatma Madhudvit Sevanu Purakta Manasam Abhavo Pipalgu Translation It is very difficult to give up material opulence, land, children, society, friends, riches, wife, or the blessings of the goddess of fortune which are desired even by the great demigods. <clears throat> King Bharata did not desire such things, and this was quite befitting his position, because for a pure devotee whose mind is always engaged in the service of the Lord, even liberation or merging into the existence of the Lord is insignificant. And what to speak of material opportunity? Purport. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 5.14.44 concerning the glorification of King Bharata whom Shukadeva Goswami was describing to King Parikshit. Text 270. Svarga Parvaga Nahakshiva Api Tuyarta Darishna. Translation. A person who is a devotee of Lord Narayana is not afraid of hellish condition because he considers it the same as elevation to heavenly planets 
or liberation. The devotees of Lord Narayana are accustomed to seeing all these things on the same level. Purport. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 6.17.28 regarding the personality Chitra Ketu. Once when Chitra Ketu saw the goddess Parvati sitting on the lap of Lord Shambhu, Shiva, he became a little ashamed and criticized Lord Shiva, who was sitting just like an ordinary man with his wife on his lap. For this reason, Chitra Ketu was cursed by Parvati. Later he became a demon named Vrtasura. Chitra Ketu was a very powerful king and a devotee, and he could certainly retaliate even against Lord Shiva. But when Parvati cursed him, he immediately accepted the curse with a bowed head. When he agreed to accept this curse, Lord Shiva praised him and told Parvati that a devotee of Lord Narayana is never afraid of accepting any position provided there is a chance to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the purport of Narayana Paraha, Sarve Na Kutachana Vibhyati. Text 271. Translation. Both liberation and fruit of activity are rejected by devotees. You are trying to establish these things as life's goals and the process to attain it. Text 272. Sanyasi de kiya mure karaha vanchana, makahi lateni sadhya sadhana lakshana. Translation Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued speaking to the Tattvavadi Acharya. Seeing that I am a mendicant in the renounced order of life, you have been playing with me in a duplicitous way. You have not actually described the process and ultimate objective. Text 273. Sunitatva charya haila antare la jita, Prabhura Vaishnava tari haila vishmita. Translation After hearing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Acharya of the Tattvavad Sampradaya became very ashamed. Upon observing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's rigid faith in Vaishnavism, he was struck with wonder. Text 274 Acharya kahe tumiye kahe se satyaya. Sarva Shastri Vaishnavera E Sunichaya. Translation The Tatvavadi Acharya replied, What you have said is certainly factual. It is the conclusion of all the revealed scriptures of the Vaishnavas. Text 275. Tatapi Madhva Nirbanda Sehi Acharya Sabi Sampradaya Sambanda. Translation. Still, whatever Madhavacharya has ascertained to be the formula for our party, we practice as a party policy. Text 276. Translation. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, both the fruitive worker and the speculative philosopher are considered non-devotees. We see both elements present in your sampradaya. Text 277. Translation. The only qualification that I see in your sampradaya is that you accept the form of the Lord as truth. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to point out to the Tattvavadi Acharya, who belonged to the Madhavacharya Sampradaya, that their general behavior did not favor pure devotional service, which must be devoid of the taints of fruit of activity and speculative knowledge. As far as fruit of activity is concerned, the contamination is elevation to a higher standard of life, and for speculative knowledge, the contamination is merging into the existence of the Absolute Truth. The Tattvavad Sampradaya of the Madhavacharya school sticks to the principle of Varnashram Dharma, which involves fruit of activity. Their ultimate goal, Mukti, is simply a form of desire. A pure devotee should be free from all kinds of desire. He simply engages in the service of the Lord. 
Nonetheless, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was pleased that Madhavacharya Sampradaya or the Tattvavada Sampradaya accepted the transcendental form of the Lord. This is the great qualification of these Vaishnav Sampradayas. It is the Mayavad Sampradaya that does not accept the transcendental form of the Lord. If a Vaishnava Sampradaya is also carried away by that impersonal attitude, that Sampradaya has no position at all. It is in fact that there are many so-called Vaishnavas whose ultimate aim is to merge into the existence of the Lord. The Sahaja's Vaishnava philosophy is to become one with the Supreme. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu points out that Sri Madhavendra Puri accepted Madhavacharya only because his Sampradaya accepted the transcendental form of the Lord. Text 278 Ehi mata tanragare garba chorna kari, kagutir teta bechali, aila gorahari. Translation. Thus Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu broke the pride of the Tattvavadis to pieces. He then went to holy places known as Falgu Tirtha. Text 279. Rita Kupe Visalara Karidara Shana Panjapasara Tite Aila Sachira Nandana Translation Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the son of Mother Sachi, went to Trita Kupa, and after seeing Visala deity there, he went to the holy place known as Pancha Panchapsara Tirtha. Purport the Apsaras, denizens of the heavenly planets, are generally known as dancing girls. The girls in the heavenly planets are exquisitely beautiful, and if a woman on earth is found to be very beautiful, she is compared to the Apsaras. There were five Apsaras named Lata, Budbuddha, Samichi, Surabehi, and Varna. It is said that these five beautiful dancing girls were sent by Indra to break the severe austerity of a saintly person called Achuta Rishi. This action was typical of Indra, the king of heaven. Whenever Indra discovered someone undergoing severe austerities, he would begin to fear for his post. Indra is always anxious about his position, fearing that if someone becomes more powerful than him, he would lose his elevated position. As soon as he would see a saint undergoing severe austerities, he would, see, he would send dancing girls to distract him. Even the great Vishramita Muni fell victim to his plan. When the five Apsaras went to break Achutarishi's meditation, they were all chastised and cursed by the saint. As a result, the girls turned into crocodiles in a lake that came to be known as Panchapsara. Lord Ramachandra also visited this place. From Sri Narada Muni's narration, it is understood that when Arjuna went to visit the holy places, he learned about the condemnation of the five Apsaras. He delivered them from their abominable condition, and from that day the lake came to be known as Panchapsara, and it became a place of pilgrimage. Text 280. Gokarne Shiva Deki Aila Vapiya Ani Surpara Katirte Aila Nyasi Shiromani Translation. After seeing Panchapsara, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Gokarna. While there, he visited the temple of Lord Shiva, and then he went to Dvaipayani. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the crown jewel of all the sannyasis, then went to Saparka Tirtha. Gokarna, a purport. Gokarna is situated in North Kannada, in the Maharashtra province. It is about 20 miles southeast of Karayora. Kara Oyara. This place is very famous for the temple of Lord Shiva known as Maha Balesvara. Hundreds and thousands of pilgrims come to see this temple. Surparaka is about 26 miles north of Bombay. In Maharashtra province near Bombay is a district known as Dana and a place known as Sopara. Surparaka is mentioned in the Mahabharata Shanti Parva chapter 41 verses 66 through 67. Text 281. Translation. 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then visited the town of Kolapura, where he saw the goddess of fortune in the temple of Chira Bhagavali, uh, of Chira Bhagavati, and Langa Ganesh in another temple known as Chora Parvati. Purport. Kolapura is a town in the Maharashtra province formerly known as Bombay Pradesh. Formerly, it was a native state, and it is bordered on the north by the district of Santara, on the east and south by the district of Belagama, and on the west by the district of Ratnagiri. In this place, there is a river named Uma. From the Bombay Gazette, it is understood that there were about 250 temples there, out of which six are very famous. These are one, Ambabai, or Mahalakshmi Mandira, two, Vitoba Mandira, three, Temblai Mandira, four, Mahakali Mandira, five, Tarangai, or Pratyanagira Mandira, and six, Yayai Lama Mandira. Text 282. Tata hoite pandara pore aila gora chandra. Vitala takura deki aila ananda. Translation From there, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Pandarapura, where he happily saw the temple of Vitala Thakur. Purport This city of Pandarapura is situated on the river Bhima. It is said that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu initiated Tukarama when he visited Pandarpura. This Tukarama Acharya became very famous in the Maharashtra province and he spread the Sankirtana movement all over the province. The Sankirtana party belonging to Tukarama is still very popular in Bombay in the province of Maharashtra. Tukara was a disciple of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his book is known as Abhanga. His Sankirtana party exactly resembles the Gaudiya Vaishnav Sankirtan parties, for they chant the holy name of the Lord with Mardanga and Kartals. The Lord Vitala Deva, mentioned in this verse, is a form of the Lord Vishnu with four hands. He is Narayana. Text 283. <laughs> Translation Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted and danced in various ways, as usual, and one Brahmana, seeing him in ecstatic love, was very pleased. He even invited the Lord to his home for lunch. Text 284 Translation This Brahmana offered Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu food with great respect and love. After finishing his lunch, the Lord received auspicious news. Text 285 Madhava Translation, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu received word that Sri Rangapuri, one of the disciples of Sri Madhavendra Puri, was present in that village at the home of Abramna. Text 286 Translation, hearing this news, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately went to see Sri Rangapuri at the Brahmana's home. Upon entering, the Lord saw him sitting there. Text 287. Translation. As soon as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the Brahmana, he immediately began to offer him obeisances in ecstatic love, falling flat to the ground. The symptoms of transcendental transformation were visible, namely tears, jubilation, trembling, and perspiration. Text 288 Translation 
Upon seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in such an ecstatic mood, Sri Ranga Puri said, Your Holiness, please get up. Text 289. Sri Pada Dara Mura Goshanira Sambanda Sahavina Anyatra Nahi E Premara Ganda. Translation Your Holiness is certainly related to Sri Madhavendra Puri, without whom there is no flavor of ecstatic love. Purport. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur remarks that in the disciple succession of Madhavacharya up to the advent of His Holiness Sripad Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, only Lord Krishna was worshipped. After, Shri Madhav, after Srila Madhavendra Puri, worship of both Radha and Krishna was established. For this reason, Sri Madhavendra Puri is accepted as the root of worship in ecstatic love. Unless one is connected to the disciple succession of Madhavendra Puri, there is no possibility of awakening the symptoms of ecstatic love. The word Goshani is significant in this connection. The spiritual master who is fully surrendered unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead and has no business other than the Lord's service is called the best of the Paramahamsas. A Paramahamsa has no program for sense gratification. He is interested only in satisfying the senses of the Lord. One who has control of the senses in this way is called Goshani or Goswami, master of the senses. The senses cannot be controlled unless one is engaged in the service of the Lord. Therefore, the bona fide spiritual master who has full control over his senses engages 24 hours a day in the Lord's service. He can therefore be addressed as Goshani or Goswami. The title Goswami cannot be inherited, but can be given only to a bona fide spiritual master. There were six great Goswamis of Vrindavan. Sri Rupa, Sanatan, Bhattaragunath, Sri Jiva, Gopal Bhatta, and Dasaragunath. And none of them inherited the title Goswami. All of the Goswamis of Vrindavan were bona fide spiritual masters situated on the highest platform of devotional service. And for that reason, they were called Goswamis. All the temples of Vrindavan were certainly started by the six Goswamis. Later, the worship in the temples was entrusted to some householder disciples of the Goswamis, and since then, the hereditary title of Goswami has been used. However, only one who is a bona fide spiritual master of Goswami, uh, however, only one who is a bona fide spiritual master, expanding the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Krishna consciousness movement and who is in full control of his senses, can be addressed as a Goswami. Unfortunately, the hereditary process is going on. Therefore, at the present moment, in most cases, the title is being misused due to ignorance of the word's etymology. Text 290 Etabali prabhute utana kailangana kalagali kadi dunhe karena krandana Translation. After saying this, Sri Rangapuri lifted Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and embraced him. When they both embraced, they began to cry in ecstasy. Text 291. Translation. After some moments, they came to their senses and became patient. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then informed Sri Rangapuri about his relationship with Ishvara Puri. Text 292. Translation. They were both inundated by the wonderful ecstasy of love which was aroused in both of them. They finally sat down and respectfully began to converse. Text 293. Translation. In this way, they discussed topics about Lord Krishna continuously for five to seven days. Text 294. Translation. 
Translation. Out of curiosity, Sri Rangapuri asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about his birthplace, and the Lord informed him that it was Navadvipdam. Text 295. Sri Madhava Puri Rasange Sri Rangapuri Purve Asvachi Lateno Maria Nagari. Translation. Sri Rangapuri had formerly gone to Navadvip with Sri Madhavendra Puri, and he therefore remembered the incidents that took place there. Thus ends our reading for today. All glories to Sri Pad Bhakti Madhavapur Maharaj Ki Jai. All glories to Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Nimalacharya Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.